So, you want to use ocean deformers. So these are a new sort of actors that we've introduced in our latest update. These are still being kind of worked on, so this first release may not be quite production ready, but in case you want to start playing with this new feature, here is how you will need to enable it. Now there's a couple of extra steps here more than usual, because enabling this feature will add a little bit of a rendering cost, even if it's not in use. So we've kind of disabled all of these by default, so it doesn't cost performance on people who don't end up using this. But for the rest of you, here is how you can enable it. So, first of all, we need to go to our project settings. Make sure Shader Model 6 support is enabled. We're going to want to restart the engine, but not yet. And next up, we're going to go to Virtual Textures and enable Virtual Texture support. Uh, the rest of the settings you can kind of keep as, uh, as they are. Next up, Now, we've kind of chosen to close the engine and not restart it because there is an extra thing that we want to do. So this is our main project file, so the waterline beta tutorial. And what we need to do is get into the config folder of our project and open up the default engine.ini. And uh, we can open this with Notepad. For this, we're going to scroll down to here where we have the engine renderer settings. We're going to press enter to add in an extra light and we're going to, oh, we actually have it here already. Our single, our water dot single layer water depth prepass equals one. We need this line by default. You will have it off. So it's not going to show up there. It, it really doesn't matter where it is. It can be like at the end of this little uh, sort of uh, paragraph. But yeah, once we have this, we can control S this and close it. And now we can start our project again. So now that we're back in our map, what we need to do is change our material for the ocean surface. So to do that, we just need to open our material instance that we're using quite currently. Double click to open it. Scroll all the way down until we get to the parent. And for this particular instance, let's just open it up in a separate window. If we hit the little uh, file with the magnifying glass, we're going to go see these two materials over here. This is Gen 3 and this is uh, Gen 3 DF for deformers. So we're going to swap the parent by clicking on it once and then this little arrow. And now everything's going to start looking a bit weird at the moment. The shaders have compiled and everything is looking OK. One thing that we need to do is also enable localized VFX and once we enable this everything's gonna break for a bit but that's okay because that means we're ready to add in our deformers so next up we can go to our ocean deformers over here select deformers and what we're going to do is add our base once we drag and drop this uh, we can set the location to uh, as it is, it actually sets the location automatically. We're going to go over how this works a bit more. This is basically a virtual uh, runtime virtual texture actor. You could see it over here and adjust some additional settings if needed. Uh, the default values that we have are pretty good for the moment, so you may not need to tweak these too much. Just to go over a bit more over the parameters and what they do. For the blueprint deformer base, you have scale and height, and these basically deform the overall um, runtime virtual texture actor and uh, just deform it. And you can offset its location with these parameters, and yeah, it's gonna start messing things up if we move at the moment. And we have an infinite scale slash dynamic location setting at the moment. And the cool thing is that the way it works is that there is like an inner sort of collision box and an outer. And whenever the player uh, leaves the inner one, it will sort of recenter it around its position. So it's not continuously following the player character, but uh, it will reposition itself as a sort of um, beyond a certain threshold. Now, this is a bit more um, important to kind of maybe 
hide as some of these actors can flicker sometimes when this happens. Uh, yeah, this is something that we've largely eliminated, I believe, but it is something to keep in mind. And what we can do right now is add one of these three. So first of all, the most basic one, we have a blueprint deformer hole and dragging and dropping this. You could see that, well, it does what it says it does. It's a hole and we can move it around and it'll make a hole in our ocean. But the cool thing is that with this particular one, we can have a number of different sort of shapes that deform it. So for example, we have a sphere. Uh, let's see some of the more basic ones we can have. Uh, your regular type cube and we can move it around, spin it, scale it, anything goes. Next up, if you want to have something a bit more advanced of a visual effect, we have the deformer for water, this one. And once we drag and drop it, let's just increase its size a bit. And what it does is that it grabs the same sort of single layer water material and what it does, it's, it creates it as a sort of deformer. Now, this looks pretty great. And uh, with the sphere, you have some pretty nice sort of cutoff. So it can be convex, concave, uh, whatever you need, really. Uh, these are more complex actors, and they come with a number of different settings for a material inner, outer, and these sort of control the appearance of this wall. Next up, you have the deformer shape, which you can switch out yet again to cube. And yeah, you can pretty much have it any way you want. Now, there are some limitations to this, and let's just go over them real quick. Uh, let's do our localized transform. And if we set our cube to be at 45 degrees, you will see that it's actually holding up quite well. Um, going back here, we can move it up, down, and uh, these things are looking quite well with the water. It's sinking up quite nicely. Uh, we can adjust these a bit more by shell thickness, sort of push the water back out or forward as needed, just minor adjustments on your end. Or you could open up the inner material and adjust things like uh, let's see, not offset, but shell scale, you can also adjust it like that. So these are all like little bit of pieces that you can play around with and really fine tune the appearance of where the waterline is. But the current limitation is that, for example, right now, things are, it's gonna break a bit because we have this sort of wall going under the waves and this wall, oops, going under the wave. So technically it's working right now quite well, actually. But if we are to crease it, we can see a mismatch. And that is because the angle of this is, um, what's it gonna be? Something like acute or obtuse. So either both of these need to be facing outward or both of these need to be facing inward. Now, when we had our cube in the previous orientation, both of it, both of these walls were facing inward, and if we move it up, both are facing outward. So it's a weird limitation for now. We're kind of figuring out how to work around this for a future release, but yeah, this is something that you could do. And next up, let's go to our sort of even more advanced kind of material. Bear in mind that these are all kind of still works in progress. We have the former glass, and let's just increase the, whoops the size and what this does is that it will actually sort of mimic the underwater post process effect but on a surface material so you'll get the god rays the sort of skylight the anisotropic thing from the sun that we have and the biggest difference is that from underneath it you could see the ocean surface under surface and through it the sky Whereas if we were to drop uh, this sort of actor here, it will not render 
the surface of the water beyond its walls, for example. Yeah, like that. No matter how transparent you make it. So this is pretty good for sort of visual visualizations of, for example, we have a pretty big ship and we want to do like a bit of a cutaway to it and we can increase the sort of opacity. Over there, we have a bunch more of these actors working. So something cool is like this, where you could peek underwater of objects. But if you were to say inside it and looking upwards, it doesn't hold up as much. So this is where you would go with this more expensive effect over here. Now with this material, you have all the sort of parameters that you would expect for controlling color, depth and everything. Um, really play around with these and see how they work. Something else that is pretty cool is that right now, let's grab our camera tracker and set it to track actor just so we could run this in simulation. Uh, these do have some physical responses. So, whoops, wrong button. Uh, we want to go simulate. And um, yeah, now you could see that our new buoyancy system is working pretty good. Here you have a boat that's being made to be very sort of bouncy and light. Here you have ones that are a bit more realistic. And oh, you have this one that's about to fall. And fall it will. So for example, if we were to grab it and place it over one of our deformers, they work with our physics system. So it will fall through it. And because of the way buoyancy works, that looks like it uh, flew into one of the others. It's going to move. Now, another cool thing is that these deformers can actually be moved in runtime. So if I were to grab it, I can grab the boat and just sort of play around with it. So yeah, this is pretty much where this system is. It is uh, subject to change. It's still pretty early on. And uh, here are some of our other cool experiments that we've done with different sort of shapes. Now you may have noticed that when we go inside, because we're in editor and simulation, we have underwater VFX. But if we were to quickly quit out and uh, at the current camera location, and we were just to hit play in standard viewport, you will notice that upon detecting the player character inside this volume, the underwater VFX will be off. And now if we were to sort of exit it, maybe a bit more, they're back on. <laughs> so yeah, there's a cool things you could do with a cube, some really exotic shapes and get some really wild looking reflections. Right now we're kind of just not using, um, we're not using lumen reflections. So these are just kind of like your regular cube map, but you might be able to get, to get some really interesting results. Here is something a bit more massive, like a big cutaway of the whole ocean. Uh, we just kind of have uh, a single one of these actors and we've built stuff around it. So for just uh, technical or engineering visualizations, these are some things you could do. You could try experimenting with custom shapes. So for the moment, we've really kind of mainly messed with the circles and cubes. Here we have a cone, I believe, which is looking quite all right. Uh, cylinder and yeah. So this is like something that we've just introduced. It's been requested for quite a while, but this is something that we will actually be building up upon a bit more in the future. So yeah, we're kind of uh, waiting to see what you guys think about this and uh, let us know some feedback on it.